Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at another two-in-one, this time from Lenovo. We've got their Yoga 700 in on loan. This is a 14-inch a two-in-one device, this one powered by an i5 processor. It will do all of the uh, two-in-one functions we've come to expect from Lenovo and other manufacturers. So you can do uh, the multimedia thing, the tent mode, as well as, of course, the tablet mode as well. Uh, this is kind of the more affordable version uh, compared to their Yoga 900 we looked at a couple of weeks ago that was thinner and lighter, but also a lot more expensive. So this is kind of the middle of the road uh, option if you are in the market for one of their two-in-ones. I should say in the interest of full disclosure that this this is on loan from Lenovo. It goes back to Lenovo when we're done with this review. I have no financial relationship with the company. They're not paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody is going to review this video before it is posted except for me. Uh, again, these are my standard disclaimers I do on all my videos because I do think uh, more people on YouTube need to be more transparent. So I'm going to keep doing this until everybody else does it too, and then we'll have a good standard, hopefully, for everybody to follow moving forward. So let's take a look at the hardware now. This is a 14-inch display, a 1920 by 1080, so you got a full HD IPS display, uh, pretty decent viewing angles, although I wish it was a little bit brighter, even when it's plugged in, it isn't all that bright, but uh, certainly a functional touch display, which you'll need on one of these two-in-ones. Uh, this one is kind of the less expensive sibling to the 900, the Yoga 900, that we looked at a couple of weeks ago, so it's a little bit heavier, uh, but it does cost a lot less. So this one with the 14-inch display, an i5 6200U processor at 2.3 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD uh, will run about $800, which actually isn't a bad deal uh, considering all that you are getting equipped on this one. And for an extra $50, they have one with a GPU, an external graphics processor, so you can uh, run games and other things a little bit better than perhaps you might do on this one. Uh, right now, that's only about a $50 add-on, so you can get a, a GTX 940M GPU, so not the fastest one out there, but certainly better than nothing. Uh, that one will run you about $850 in the same configuration. So they do have an option for uh, gamers out there. It weighs about three and a half pounds. It's 1.6 kilograms, so not too heavy, but certainly heavier than the more expensive uh, 900. But uh, overall, a pretty nice build. You've got aluminum here on the top, so you have a nice metal feel to the keyboard base. The rest of it, I believe, is plastic. They've got a rubberized coating around it as well. It does have a nice build quality to it overall. Uh, the screen bounces a little bit when you're touching it, but the hinge does keep it uh, in any position you want to put it in. So it does tend to stay put. Uh, based on where you position the screen, which is pretty nice. Not too crazy about the keyboard. I like the Lenovo keyboard layout, but on this one, the keys don't travel very far, so I would like a little bit more travel to the keys to make it a little bit more comfortable to type on. Uh, so wasn't too crazy about the keyboard. The trackpad, th though, I do like. Uh, it actually is pretty uh, responsive, and there's definitely been an improvement of Windows trackpads across the board in this, this uh, current model year, essentially, of uh, these laptops. So I do like the click pad here. Again, the keyboard could use a little bit of work, but it is backlit if you're looking for a backlit keyboard. On the side here, you have a combo USB 2.0 and power adapter. It's not USB-C, obviously, but uh, Lenovo has this, this feature where you can charge the laptop uh, with this orange USB port, and then when you're not charging it, use it as a, another USB 2.0 port. You have a faster USB 3 port over here. You have a headset microphone combo jack there. You've got a card reader here for SD cards. However, the cards really stick out quite far when you have them plugged in, so that's about as far in as it goes when you attach a card to it, so you may want to keep that in mind if you are looking for uh, SD card as uh, your ongoing external storage. USB 3.0, also on this side you have a HDMI port here. This is the micro HDMI, so it's a little bit smaller than the large uh, HDMI plugs we usually see. Volume rocker up and down here. This is a screen orientation lock, so if you want to lock the screen position down while you rotate the laptop around, you can uh, push this button to lock the screen orientation. Uh, this button here is a BIOS button for uh, doing resets and other things, and over here is your standby button. Now, because this has an i5 processor and an optional i7 along with an optional GPU, cooling it is very important. So this is not fanless. There is a air intake here at the bottom. It'll exhaust out of the back here. So you definitely want to keep the bottom clear as best you can. It'll work on the lap or something, but you definitely want to keep it off something that uh, won't give it good airflow. So I do recommend uh, putting it down on a desk. And uh, one thing to note, speaking of being placed down on a desk, is that the speakers are on the bottom. We're seeing that on a lot of these two-in-ones. So the result is that when you're in laptop mode, the sound is going to vary based on what it's being set down upon. So I haven't found that the audio quality to be all that great no matter what thing I put it on. 
rather tinny speakers. So if you want better audio quality, uh, plug in a pair of speakers or uh, plug in a pair of headphones or something like that. And battery life is average. I'm getting about six hours doing uh, web browsing and word processing tasks. Uh, you'll get a little bit less if you're gaming and playing back movies and other things on it. Uh, so definitely uh, plan on charging it if you want to get through an entire workday. So now let's take a look and see how it performs. We're going to look at our usual web browsing, word processing, and some games too. So let's get to it. All right, let's get started with some web browsing. You will see, though, how shiny this screen is. So I'll do my best to keep uh, the reflections down to a minimum. I'm going to visit my YouTube page real quick, and we'll see how fast everything comes up. Uh, this does have wireless AC, the faster of the wireless standards. And of course, that i5 processor is really going to help uh, get uh, the fastest response times here when we're playing back video. So you can see just how fast everything comes up. Uh, really no lag at all. We're not losing any frames as we're playing back video. I tested 4K video and 1080p 60 video earlier. Uh, all those things work just fine as well. So I think you're going to have a very good uh, video playback experience on this device, uh, whether you're at 1080 or even 4K downsampled to its 1080p uh, display. So very good performance there. On the Octane benchmark test, which gives us an actual number for how well it does web browsing, we get a score of 26,080, uh, and that puts it in line with uh, many other i5 powered devices, some of which cost much more than this one costs. And that's one of the uh, great things about where the PC industry is right now is that uh, the processors tend to be the same on the cheap ones and the expensive ones. So here you get uh, some really decent performance for $800 that you might see on a $2,000 laptop, but the build quality might not be as uh, as nice. So maybe the it doesn't have the magnesium casing and it's not as lightweight or something like that. But uh, when it comes down to actually getting work done on it, it will perform uh, as well as many more expensive devices will. And that performance will continue to productivity applications also. So I've got a Microsoft Word document up that's got a ton of graphics and uh, text on it. And you can see just how fast everything responds as we're scrolling through. Uh, making adjustments to the document here happen pretty much instantaneously. And again, that's because you've got a very powerful processor in here uh, making quick work of these kinds of tasks. And I would also say that Photoshop and other things that involve a lot of 2D kind of work are going to also do very well on here. Again, because you have a lot of RAM, 8 gigs, as well as that i5 processor that will do very, very well with those kinds of activities. Gaming is a little bit more iffy, though, especially if you don't get the version with the discrete GPU. So this one is just relying on the uh, built-in Intel graphics, which are going to be great for Minecraft, which we're going to take a look at right now, uh, but maybe not so great for more modern games like uh, Rocket League or GTA V or something along those lines. So let's have a look now at Minecraft, and we'll see how it does with more modern stuff, too. All right, so here is the Minecraft performance without the GPU. We didn't get a GPU configured on this particular device. We're seeing frame rates uh, anywhere from like 50 to 80 frames per second, which is pretty good. Again, uh, that i5 chip with its built-in graphics uh, will do better than prior generations will, so not bad on the performance side. Again, you'll see better performance if you opt for the NVIDIA GPU option, which is another $50. Uh, you'll see better performance and in some cases better image quality. So casual games like this, the original version of Minecraft uh, and others will do okay, but uh, when you get into more modern stuff, not so good. Let's take a look now at Rocket League and you'll see what I mean. All right, so here are the settings I set up for Rocket League, and you'll see what we get for performance now when I resume the game. Uh, so we're getting frame rates around 20 frames per second or so, and that's with everything turned down. So it isn't bad, it's certainly playable, uh, but it doesn't look all that great. So you certainly won't get a, a decent quality image that you might get out of something with a discrete GPU. So that uh, GPU option will give you a little bit better image quality and faster frame rates at that image quality. It uh, won't be as good as perhaps a dedicated gaming laptop might be able to do, but it will be better. Better, uh, and that's one thing to consider. So Rocket League is playable, but just not at 60 frames per second. We're running here at about 20 right now uh, and with reduced image quality also. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, which measures how well it can play games like Rocket League, we get a score that pretty much lines up with what we just saw. 4,879 frame rates about where we saw them on Rocket League. Uh, so not the best gaming device out there, but I do want you to look at the score that I got a few months ago with the Microsoft Surface Book. And I think that will be a good example of the kind of performance you'll see uh, with the $50 GPU add-on that you can get when you configure this because I think that GPU on the Surface Book uh, lines up pretty much where this one is. And by the way, this is half the price. You'll get the same performance half the price and that's definitely something uh, worth considering if you're in the market for something and don't have the budget uh, for something like a Surface Book. It's not going to be as nicely built. Uh, you don't have as nice of a, of a screen, but uh, it certainly is more than capable with a uh, 1080p display, uh, pretty lightweight. You get the two 
two-in-one function and uh, really is a pretty good deal for uh, what you'll pay for it. So uh, this one again is $800 without the GPU, $850 with the graphics processor. And I think it's a nice compromise system if a gaming PC is just too big and bulky for you, you can get a GPU on this thing that will play some games and also uh, not be too heavy to walk around with and really good for getting uh, all of your work done too. This is Lon Seidman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.